Greetings, old souls. It's Dr. J, and today we're going to talk about something that is pretty practical. I mean, everything I, I talk about, I hope you understand, has a practical application. But this, in particular, uh, addresses relationship breakdowns and confusion at work and a lot of things that we think are originating in the world around us when, in fact, more often than not, it's telling us something about the world within us. Specifically, um, we start by uh, affirming or remembering the fourfold self. So the fourfold self, if you remember, is the mental, emotional, physical, spiritual dimensions to who we are. So I also talk about four layers, your universal, your essential, your unresolved and your conditional uh, layers. So you can think of that as sort of stacked vertically if you want a, a visual. And then you can also cut all four of those into four dimensions, right? Emotional expressions, physical expressions, um, mental expressions, and then of course, what I would categorically call spiritual um, expressions, even though it's all spiritual, right? So having said that, um, when we start feeling like the world is not cooperating or like there's something wrong with the world, it's sometimes difficult to tell if we are in a moment of clear discernment. And so what we're realizing is that we're not aligned or something doesn't fit or something needs to be changed or addressed or if we're actually coming from an unresolved place, maybe some kind of a wound, some kind of a history, um, that we're in fact triggered and reactive more than we are whatever, wise and insightful. So I find that there are some simple ways to know where you're coming from or where you're rooted in that particular um, moment. When you're living a soul-centered life or when you're feeling soul-centered in a particular moment, that means that your identity in that moment is aligned with your ultimately spiritual nature, right? Your soul nature. You know that you're in the world, but not of the world. You know that <clears throat> you're here for a learning journey. You know that that the big picture is really the only picture and that all the little things that we go through and the difficult things that we go through are, are only relatively real. So the soul-centered moment is the moment when we are most clearly identified with, um, you might say, the non-human self. Now, what's interesting about that, of course, is that it doesn't mean we bypass being human. Okay, so let's be clear. When I talk about the, the soul-centered self, I'm actually talking about feeling the full permission to be human. You see, when we remember that we are a soul first, having a human experience, it ideally or optimally gives us that permission, that sense of security to know that who and what we truly are is it's lasting, it's eternal, it's ultimately untouched and unbroken by the things of life. And therefore, it can be more present, more curious, and even feeling more fully the difficult things of life. We know they will pass. However, one of the conditions of being on this planet is that the human dimension to who we are in the dense human world, which as you can see is remarkably beautiful, well, it's very compelling and it's built to be compelling. It's, it, we're here to believe this is real. And I don't think anyone's a fool or wrong for not knowing that we are living in a matrix or we're living in an illusion. No, this is precisely what we're here to do. However, there is such a thing as balance, right? So we can stay rooted in our spiritual identity, our soul identity, and yet show up to really embrace and savor and experience and be curious about every human moment we have. Now, when we are soul-centered, you will find that your mental, emotional, and physical dimensions express that, or they follow that orientation, right? It's almost like uh, changing the map filter on your 
digital uh, map on your phone. You can see the terrain, or you can see the traffic, or you can see um, sort of a standard view or a satellite view. With each changing dimension or each changing filter, certain things are revealed and certain things are hidden. So when you're soul-centered, your mind will move towards curiosity, learning, a sense of wonder, so open mind. Your heart, your emotional world, will become more oriented around connection and care, right? So feeling that, that active connection. We become collaborative, right? The curiosity and the learning works with this feeling of wanting to understand and wanting to help. And then we have the physical. And that's really where, you know, I used the word collaborative when I was talking about being caring and connected. That's really where it shows up. Like, we want to help. We want to be a part of a solution. We want to do things, right? That's why it's physical. We're willing to lend a hand. Our, my energy is your energy, right? Uh, our well-being is one and the same. They're connected. And interestingly, you can use any of these three kinds of attitudes, learning, uh, caring connections and, you know, collaborative interconnection as ways into a soul-centered life. So a soul-centered life or soul-centered moment creates these feelings and behaviors, and these behaviors and feelings help fuel a soul-centered life. But we were going to talk about what happens when we get off track. What happens when we think we're living a soul-centered life because we're reading all the right books and we're talking about spiritual teachers and we're doing all this good stuff? Well, yes, 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 there are three equal opposite things that we tend to do when we are in a moment of fear or reaction. Now, let's remember that fear and reaction is typically because something in our unresolved self, remember the four layers, is being activated. The memory is awakened. The energy is resonant. Something is telling us that we are, we are in a situation that is unsafe. Unsafe. And maybe even unsafe for the soul, right? Maybe, maybe we feel threatened at a core level, or maybe we're not just getting our way. But whatever it is, whatever it is, when we are stressed and reactive and triggered, it means that our identity has shifted from the trusting, uh, learning, connecting, collaborative, soul-centered self to something else. We've put fear, survival, security, safety at the center of who we are. And when safety is at the center of who we are, rather than, let's say, faith, well, everything changes. The way we think changes, the way we feel changes, the way we act changes. So our thinking moves towards judgment, like what the hell's wrong with this person or these people or this place or this thing? Don't they see they're doing it wrong or there's a better way or it shouldn't be like that, right? All that thinking is judgment. So judgment, judgment, judgment. Anytime judgment shows up, you know you've shifted out of a soul-centered moment. Emotionally, we move to attachment. Now, what does attachment mean? Well, attachment really means we are attached to our feeling. We are attached to safety. We are attached to control. We're attached to judgment. Attachment means it's not just that I judge you, but I think I'm right. Like, I feel it, and I claim it, and I believe it to be true. And I'm not willing to let it go. I'm not willing to let it go. That's a good clue. Um, of attachment. And then we go to the physical and that behavior is controlling. Okay, so things, um, there isn't just an optimal way to do things, this is the way things have to be. Or, you know, things aren't working out, so let me just take charge and I'll make it my way. Uh, so here we go, we have the mind goes to judgment, the emotions go to attachment, and the physical world, the physical behavior goes towards control. And if you can pay attention, just pay attention, right? You don't even have to fix everything or be perfect or any of that kind of stuff. But what if you just pay attention for a day or challenge yourself and try it for a week 
and just notice whenever you see the behavior showing up when you are out of balance or off center. And then just take a breath, name it, and know that it's a reaction you're having, but that it has no substantial reality. You aren't actually right when you judge someone. You are not justified when you control something. You are not validated or affirmed when you get what you're attached to or you preserve your attachment. In fact, all those things are only affirming the false illusion of separateness and the fact that we have an implicit uh, doubt that the future will be okay, that we will be okay. We, we forget in that moment that we are ultimately souls independent of these human conditions, but here for now to learn, to love, and to help. And isn't that really what emerges from our soul-centeredness? The mind goes to learning, the heart goes to loving, and the body sees and shares its identity with the world around it, and it wants to be a part of the solution. It wants to help. So notice where you're at today, without judgment. In fact, when you notice that you're controlling, judging, attached, well, just use your other three qualities. Learn from it. Love and accept yourself. It's normal. And then maybe try something different. It's as simple as that. Well, it's simple. It's not that easy. Anyway, it was really nice to share this beautiful day with you. And I uh, hope you get this video soon. I'm sorry for all my video problems lately, but I'm fixing them a little bit at a time. And uh, I guess that's all. We'll see you later, old souls.